Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss and today I'm here to share a life update. This is not just an average life update, this is a huge, huge, huge life update. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on. I do upload five videos every single week and we always do something kind of fun on Sundays like life updates. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I have followed to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive. We would love to have you, and that's where you can keep up with me a little bit more day to day. So let's jump in to my massive life update. So if you saw Wednesday's What I Eat In A Day video, Troy and I made a pretty big announcement in that video, and that announcement is we are moving. In that video, we talked about why we're moving, where we're moving, kind of what we're doing in the process of moving, but today I really wanna deep dive into why we're moving, where we're moving, where we are in the process, and kind of what to expect over the next several months. Like I said, in Wednesday's video, we basically just announced that we're moving and talked very briefly about it, and I got a lot of questions from you guys, you wanted more information, a little bit more detail. And so today that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to be inserting pictures and things as I talk about why we're moving, where, when, how, all of the details. So first let's talk about where we're moving. So if you follow me, if you're an OG, you know that Troy and I moved from Spokane, Washington to Arizona about two and a half years ago. Now we are 100% staying in Arizona. I truly don't see us ever moving out of Arizona. We love it here. We absolutely love it here. But when we moved here from Spokane, of course we moved states away. We purchased the home that we're in now sight unseen. The only time we saw it was when our realtor walked us through on our phone and showed us video. And you know that that's not always a true representation of a home. And then of course I saw it in real life when I flew down here for the home inspection. Now don't get me wrong. I always say we love the community that we live in. It is a master planned community. We actually live in a gated part of that community, which we also really like. We love our home. It's a three bedroom, two bath home. It's a one level. We have a three car garage, which is something that we absolutely had as a necessity when we moved here. Troy and I do have three vehicles, so we absolutely wanted a three-car garage. And for the most part, this is a perfect home for us. One other thing that we really like about our home is that my office where I'm filming is on the opposite side of the home than our master bedroom. If you didn't know, Troy and I have completely different sleep schedules. I go to bed at like 7.38 and get up three to four. Troy goes to bed at 2 a.m. and gets up at 10 a.m. So the fact that my office is on the opposite side of the house, it allows me to work without disturbing him. We also appreciate that we have a smaller front yard, a smaller backyard. Moving from three acres in Washington, that was one another thing we were looking for is something a little bit lo more low maintenance. Troy's just physically unable to do yard work. So we actually have someone come out and trim everything down up for us once a month and clean it all up. So we like that we have a little bit smaller, low maintenance yard. There's actually a lot of things we really, really love about our home and our community. You know that my boot camp group is here. You know that I walk to our gym here and utilize the amenities of our area, the, all the pools, the events that our community puts on. There's, like I said, a lot of pluses about where we live. And there's also things about where we live that we wish were a little bit different. One is we wish that we had a view. There's some amazing, beautiful mountains in this area. There's a lot of golf courses in this area. We really wanted our forever home to have some type of a view, whether that's a mountain view or to be on a golf course. That was something we really wanted. It just wasn't something we were able to do when we originally moved here, both financially as well as just being limited to what houses were on the market that were available. We had to buy a pre-existing home, not a new build, because we needed to make sure that when we left Washington, we had somewhere to go. And with a new build, you there can be delays and things that happen when building a home and we would have literally been homeless with three dogs and a U-Haul full of things and three vehicles. It just was not an option for us. The community that we live in is also very family focused. In fact, the average age in, and demographic in this community is in the mid thirties. So we're actually old for this community as far as demographic goes. And as you know, we don't have any children and this is a very children focused community. There's a lot of amenities for kids like splash pads and water parks and lots of kid 
events, everything from toddlers to teenagers. This community does have a lot to offer families. It is a very family focused community. And with that being fantastic and wonderful, again, we don't have children. So we don't take advantage of a lot of the family types of things that are part of this community. I will say also that this last 4th of July, actually both of all the 4th of July's that we've been here have been traumatic. They've been a little bit traumatic, especially for Lola. She is petrified of fireworks. And this last 4th of July, our neighbors up the road were letting off those huge fireworks. Like what they have in firework shows that go 20 feet into the air in a big boom. Lola literally shook and panted for hours. I was up several hours that night. It was a pretty miserable 4th of July. And I honestly, to be honest with you, after that happened, I told Troy, I don't want to live here next 4th of July. I want to move to a more quiet community. I don't want to necessarily be in a family centered community. Since again, we don't have children and that's not something that's a necessity for us. So there are positive, there's a lot of positives about where we live, but there's also things that we definitely would like to change. Another thing is, and I've mentioned this before, we live in Sawaida, Arizona, which is about 25 minutes outside of Tucson. And I've mentioned that my in-laws live about eight miles from us in a town called Green Valley. So Green Valley, Arizona is a kind of luxury retirement town. Most of the homes in that area are 55 and older. I think the, av the average age in Green Valley is mid to high 50. So very different than the 30 demogra 30s demographic of the community that we live in now. So also when we moved here originally, obviously we're not 55 and older. We actually looked into potentially living near my in-laws, but all of those communities were 55 and older. In fact, it's really hard to find a home in a community in Green Valley that isn't 55 and older. So that kind of took that out of the equation for us. The great thing about Green Valley versus where we live is there's a lot more mountain view properties. There's tons of golf courses. In fact, all the golf courses are in Green Valley. So that's a lot of the great amenities that are part of that town. And like I said, it's literally eight miles, 10 minutes away from where we live now. So prior to the 4th of July, but really after the 4th of July, that's when Troy and I really started talking about where do we see ourselves in the next five years? Where do we see ourselves as Troy approaches 55? He is two years older than me, so he would be 55 before I would be 55. And we talked about what is, again, what does that look like for us? Where do we wanna live? Do we want to pursue our original dream of living on a golf course or having a view property? Do we want to leave the community that we live in and go to a 55 and older community? So we started talking about that much more seriously prior to and especially after the 4th of July. So literally just a few weeks ago. And we kind of deduced that what we were looking for for our forever home or for the home that we wanted to retire in and live out the rest of our life in or as long as we're able to live on our own in a home is we definitely wanted to pursue moving to the Green Valley area. My lifestyle, especially being much older. I mean, I go to bed really early. I get up really early. We're not partiers. We're not people who go out late or go to clubs. We want a slower paced, more relaxed lifestyle. So we kind of, so we figured out that Green Valley was definitely what we were looking at. We talked about, you know, again, a property on the golf course, a property with a mountain view. Do we want to look into a pre-existing home or do we want to build a home from the ground up and make it everything that we ever wanted it to be if it's going to be our forever home? So we really started talking more and more and more about what did that look like for us in the next five years. So I had a conversation with my friend, Melissa. I talk about Melissa a lot. Uh, she's one of my boot camp friends and she's actually become one of my closest friends here. Well, she actually works for a house cleaning organizing service that's part of our community, but she does a lot of, she has a lot of clients in the Green Valley area. And so I was telling her, Hey, this is kind of what we're looking at. We're thinking about maybe moving to Green Valley. And it was funny because she said, Oh my God, when my kids are gone, we're out, we're out of this community that we live in now. And we're going to pursue living in a more quiet, older populated community as well. So it was funny that she said that. And for the record, she just turned 40. So she is much younger than Troy and I, but she mentioned that they're that all of these 55 and older communities in Green Valley, in order for them to be aligned with fair housing practices, a portion of the homes in these 55 and older communities have to allow people under 55 to live in them. Now, there are a lot of strict rules when it comes to that. So for example, you typically can't have anybody living with you under the age of 18 or 19 years old. So it takes out a lot of younger families because you can't have children in those 55 and older communities. Now, grandkids can come visit 
it for a short period of time, but you can't have anybody living with you under the age of say 18 or 19. So she said, I would recommend that you go look into those 55 and older communities now because we don't have children under the age of 19 living with us. So we would fall into that 20% that aligns with the fair housing policies. So once Melissa shared that with us, Troy and I started much more seriously looking into Green Valley. She also mentioned a community called Quail Creek, which is actually a luxury living community in Green Valley. So it is very different than the community we live in now. It is still a master planned community, so it's a development, so to speak, but it is a luxury master planned community. There's actually a championship golf course that's part of the community. There's pools, there's a place to do pottery and woodworking, there's classes, there's theaters, there's concert halls. It's really like a little town and it's a 55 and older community. And again, like a luxury community. And she said, I would recommend that you go talk to them because again, you fall in that 20% that may be able to move prior to being 55. So we started doing a little bit of research into that particular community. We had never been there before. We started looking into that community as well as pre-existing homes in Green Valley and seeing, are they in 55 and older communities? Are they in non-age restricted communities? And there were a few open houses a couple of weeks ago and Troy and I decided to spend a day and go look at all the open houses. So we did that and there are just some beautiful homes in that area. There are so many view properties. There's so many homes on the golf course. Pretty much everything that we wanted when we originally moved to Arizona. So we started just looking at pre-existing homes and then we decided to drive to Quail Creek, which is where my friend Melissa recommended that we look at. So we drove there and it is a fully gated community. So in order to get into the community, you have to go through a manned gate. It is manned 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So we stopped at the gate and we said, hey, we're just interested in possibly looking at model homes, if you have any model homes. So she's like, oh yeah, just go down the road and turn left where you see the sign Model Village. So as we're driving through Quail Creek looking for the model homes, it's just absolutely beautiful. The golf course is spectacular. There's so many amenities. It's very clean. It's very quiet. It's very peaceful. So we drive through and we see the model home sign. So we turn in, we can't figure out where the model homes are. There's a gate on the side over here and then there's a building and the homes look like they're in this gated area. And Troy and I are like, how do we get into the gated area? We couldn't figure out the model home area. So I told Troy, let's go back to the gate and let's ask them exactly where the model homes are. How do we get access to them? How do we talk to somebody? Are we even able to live here because it's a 55 and older community? So we leave the model home area and we turn left rather than right. We're like, let's just go see what else is in this area. So we turn left and we end up actually unbeknownst to us leaving this community and going into another adjacent community called Stonehouse. So I told Troy, I'm like, well, let's go Look at this, this is beautiful. All the properties have views. All of the properties are about an acre. So there's a lot of space between houses. So we stop into the office of Stonehouse and we have a conversation with a lovely lady named Sarah and she lets us know that yes, this is a luxury building community. It is not age restricted. So you do not have to be 55 and older to live there. And all of the properties have a view of the mountains and they are all about an acre. So. To make a long story short, she takes us out, shows us a few of the properties. They have amazing, beautiful views. We go back to the office and she let, and she re, she talks about if we opted for a new build, which is all that's pretty much available in this stone house community, our new builds, unless you're lucky enough to find someone who's built their house in the last couple years that wanna sell it because it is a fairly new community. So she's talking to us about, you know, base pricing, price, pricing to start building these homes in their area. And it's pricey. It's definitely luxury. Like you're looking at buying your property, which is anywhere from a hundred thousand to 150,000. And then the base price of your home on top of that is about 600,000. And that's before any upgrades. So you're looking, you know, seven, $800,000 for a new home, which is absolutely outside of our budget. I mean, we would literally not be able to eat if we had a house that was seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars So we gathered up all the information for her from her and said, okay, let's, we'll talk about it. So Troy and I did talk a little bit about the community. It's beautiful. The views are beautiful. It's just truly the houses are out of our budget. They're just, they're really out of our budget. So we came home and of course, Troy started doing some research into Stonehouse. We're still trying to figure out how the heck do we get to Quail Creek and look at the houses there. And he actually saw a house that was for sale in Stonehouse. So it was a two-year-old house. It was on the market for 765,000, which is 
out of our budget. I mean, really, truly out of our budget. But I told him, let's go look at it because it'll give us an idea of what we get for that price point in that community. So the next day, we met up with Sarah. We toured the home. It was not the home for us. Number one, it's out of our budget. Number two, we just didn't like the curb appeal of it. The inside finishes for it being two years old were were very well loved. It was a very well loved house for only being two years old. And we pretty much knew immediately that wasn't the house for us. So we left looking at that house. And like I mentioned, Stone House is right here and Quail Creek is right here. So I told Troy, let's see if we can freaking figure out how to get to Quail Creek. Like, how do we look at these model homes? I would really like to talk to someone about living in this area because it's absolutely beautiful. So we backtracked back through Quail Creek. We went through the gated, through the gated area. When we asked the person at the gate, we said, Hey, where, how exactly do we get to the model home? So she explained it to us. And what we missed is there was a building, like I mentioned, that's the office and we, it's kind of set back. So we didn't really know. And that gated locked area was where the model homes are. So in order for you to get to the model homes, you actually have to go through the office. All of this we didn't know. So we made our way back to model home area and this time we went into the office and the office was beautiful. It overlooked the golf course. The lovely woman at the front desk got us a salesperson named Francisco who goes by Frank and we had a long conversation with Frank. We asked about it being a 55 and older community and he said, hey, again, we have to have 20% of our residents be under 55. You just can't have anybody living with you full time under 19. So we were like, perfect. We have no children. We love everything we've seen driving through the community. And so we asked him, here's what we're, we told him, here's what we're looking for. We don't care if it's a pre-existing home. We're open to a new build. In fact, a new build sounds really good because we can customize it to what we want, but we want a view. We a hundred percent want a mountain view or we want to live on the golf course. So he said, I have one lot left that has a mountain view one, all of the other lots that are currently being built on. Now, granted, there will be future developments down the road, but what's currently available. There's one view lot left. So we said, okay, well, what is the cost of the lot? And he said it was $20,000 and my mouth dropped to the floor. Troy was like, what? Repeat that again, because remember Stonehouse, 100,000 to 150,000. Now granted at Stonehouse, the lots were larger. Quail Creek is much more like where we live now. So the homes are closer together. However, they're double the distance than the home we live in now. So we have more space between houses. We were flabbergasted when he said $20,000 for a view lot. So he let us know that normally the lot sells for $40,000, but because it's the last lot available in this strip of lots that they want to build on, right? They want to build all those houses out and move move on to the next area. They had reduced it for the month of July only to $20,000. So he said, let's go look at the lot. If you like the lot, we'll go look at the model homes and you can see if there's a floor plan that you like. So we went and looked at the lot and the minute we saw the lot, we fell in love with it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's about 10,000 square feet. So it's a good size lot. And the mountain view is spectacular. Absolutely beautiful. It's everything, everything we would have wanted with the mountain view. So Troy and I looked at the lot. We talked to Frank about the lot. There's no, the two lots next to this one are already sold. There's houses being built around there. And we got in the car and I said to Troy, I said, this is everything we want in a lot. This is everything we would want in a lot. We just need to figure out number one, if a new build is in our budget and we have to see if there's a floor plan that we're interested in. So we kind of knew when we got in the car that the lot was, was a great investment. In fact, that lot is about an $80,000 lot and it's on, and it was $20,000. So we knew that that was something that if we found a home in a floor plan and it would all work out, that we would absolutely be a hundred percent in on purchasing that lot. So we go back to the office, we walk over to that gated area where all the model homes were. And again, we explained to Frank that we absolutely have to have a one story and music to our ears. All of the homes in Quail Creek are one stories. They don't even build two story homes. And we let him know that we had to have a three car garage. That was an absolute requirement for us. And we would like to stick around the square footage of our current home, which is about 2000, 2100. Now our home in Washington was 3000 square feet in five bedrooms, which we didn't need. We wanted to have a 
2,000 to 2,100 square foot home. And again, we needed to have a three car garage. So he took us over to the model homes. We walked through the first model home. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And most of the homes are a two bedroom with a den. So they can't call the den a bedroom because it doesn't have a closet. But a den is actually perfect for me to be my office. So most of the homes have a two, be two bedrooms and a den. And most of the homes are either two to two and a half to three bathrooms. And then they range in square footage from about 1,800 to about 2,700. And there are some smaller homes available. There's some larger homes available. Most of the homes have a two car garage with a golf cart garage. And that doesn't work for us because again, we have three cars. So we told him we only really want to see floor plans that have a three car garage because that's a requirement for us. So again, he took us through the first floor plan. It was, like I said, absolutely beautiful. Just not exactly what we were looking for. I want something that's just big and open. And this first house we walked through had kind of a corridor before you got into the big and open space. But the home, I mean, absolutely beautiful, huge windows, huge patio doors to overlook the view of the mountain of that lot. So we liked the first floor plan, but we didn't love the first floor plan. And that one was about 1900 square feet. So then he took us to the second three car garage option. And that one was about 2100 square feet. So right about where we want to be. And again, beautiful home beautiful home, just again, not the floor plan that we wanted. So the third home he took us to, this one was, was about 24 to 2,500 square feet, two bedroom, a den, two and a half bath. And I will tell you the minute we walked into that floor plan, I knew, I knew, I knew that was the house for us. I loved everything about the floor plan. In fact, I love everything about the house. I told Troy, if I could just pick that model home up and plunk it on the lot, that would be perfect. The aesthetic of it, the colors of it, everything about it is perfection. It's big and open, huge master bedroom, a huge master closet, master bath. The master bath is so big that you could literally live in there. It has an amazing master bath. It has a huge den, a laundry room, a big open concept kitchen, living room area with a wet bar, so much storage, even though it's a one story house and the second bedroom, the guest bedroom is perfect. It's a large bedroom with an ensuite, which is amazing if you have guests, a huge walk-in closet. The windows are spectacular. The patio is spectacular. I knew the minute we walked in, I knew the minute we walked in, that was the house for us. And there was one more model home that was a three car garage. And this was the largest of the model homes. This one was just under 2,700 square feet. Again, two bedrooms, two and a half bath with a den. We walked through that one as well. And as beautiful as it was, it was just too much. It was too big for us. We do not need 26 or 2,700 square feet. After seeing the third home, I kind of had my heart set on that one. I mean, I knew it's, it's true what they say. Like when you walk into a home, you just know that that's the home for you. And I just knew that that was the home for us. All of the other model homes wouldn't work for us. They were either two car garages or too small for us. So we knew, we knew that that was the floor plan for us. He let us know what the base price of all of the different homes were as we walked through them. And of course that's without any upgrades and that's without the land, the lot, the lot that was 20,000 would be in addition to the base price of these houses. And you know, when you build a new house, you don't just buy the base house. There's so many upgrades that come along with that. So we walked back to the office and as we're walking back, we pretty much made the decision at that point. We knew the price of the base house. We knew the price of the lot. Pretty much made the decision that that's the route that we wanted to take. We wanted to get our hands on that lot, especially since it was the last lot with a view that's currently being built on. And he didn't know when they would be building on view lots again. It could be one year, two year, three or five years down the road. He didn't know. So we pretty much knew that that was the floor plan and that was the lot. So we're walking back to the office and I, and Troy asked him, he said, hey, with a new build, are you guys offering any incentives outside of the lot price being reduced to 20,000 from 40,000? And he said, if you buy the lot today and you commit to the lot and to the floor plan, I'll give you $15,000 of free upgrades. So I was like, that's pretty nice. And we know upgrades are expensive. So that's not definitely not going to be everything you would want to do to the upgrade the home, but at least it's a good start. So he said, I'll give you $15,000 of upgrades. So we get back to the office and we made the decision, no matter what, even if we didn't go with that floor plan in the end, we had to buy that lot. It was such a steal, such a steal that we couldn't pass the lot up. So we got back to the office and we decided to buy the lot. So essentially we bought the lot outright. The community actually required us to put a 20, 
put $20,000 of earnest money down, no matter what lot you bought, whether it was 20,000 or 200,000, you had to put $20,000 earnest money down. And for us, that actually paid for the lot. So we paid for the lot that day. We got pricing on modifications of the outside of the floor plan that we like. And of course, of course, we want the highest upgrade of the outside. Kind of knew there exactly what our base price of our house was going to be. Truthfully, we hadn't even talked to a lender. Our credit is really good. We know that our that our finances allowed us to build a new house at the price point that we were looking at in Quail Creek. So I immediately reached out to a lender. We got pre-approved. We actually got pre-qualified. It went all the way through underwriting. We got approved for the amount that we would want with upgrades in it. So we knew that it was doable for us. This house was doable for us. We loved the floor plan so much. There's just nothing else out there. This is everything that we would want. If we could pick a home, if we could buy a pre-existing home, it would be that home, those finishes on that lot. That's exactly what we would choose and it would be our dream home, our forever home. So we knew that this is what we were going to do. So we're doing it. We own the lot, we are in the process of designing the home. In fact, on August 5th, we go to design. It is a four to five day process and we get to pick everything from the ground up. Now the home itself, the floor plan, there are modifications that you can make, but the floor plan is what the floor plan is. We get to pick all of the finishes, everything from the outside paint color to the backsplash, to the way we want our bathroom, to the everything, we get to pick it all. And part of this community is they send you a link to a website where you can see all of the different upgrades and add them to your wish list. And I will tell you right now that they're really expensive. The model home that you look at has all the upgrades. I mean, that model home is about $150,000 more than the base price of the home that we're choosing, the one that we loved. So for us, that's just not in our budget. We can't do all of those upgrades, but we can do some upgrades. So we committed to the house. We went through financing and we were talking with Frank, our salesperson, and Troy said, can you do any better on the upgrades? Because he remember, he offered us 15,000 and he said, listen, if you go to design before 30 days, I will give you $20,000 of free upgrades. So we're like, sold. So we get $20,000 of free upgrades. We go to design, like I said, on August 5th. At design, you are required to put an additional $15,000 down of earnest money, and then you have to pay upfront 15% of any of your upgrades. So we're going to have a big amount of money coming out of our pocket in addition to the 20,000 that we paid for the land. The good news is, is that all of this earnest money and money we're putting out up front comes off of the total at the end. So it'll just be less that we have to pay out of our pocket at closing. And of course, we're going to use the proceeds of our current home when we sell it for the down payment for the new home. I've been in touch with the realtor that we purchased this home from. She's going to list this home as we get closer to our new home being done. Once we go through design on August 5th, we will have a date for our build of our new house. We'll know approximately when it's going to be done. And we're looking at most likely about six to seven months from design. They can't start building your house until you've went through design. So because we're going through design at the beginning of August, we're anticipating potentially moving into our new house maybe January, February, and worst case scenario, March. But like I said, I'll know more once we go through design. Once we have a concrete start date for our build, we'll be able to navigate the selling of this house and kind of know a little bit more about when we're moving. This is everything we've worked for our adult life is to have this home and to have this property with a view and to have this home be everything that we want it to be. It's a place that our family, me, Troy, Lola Palmer, will spend the rest of our lives. It's going to be everything that we would ever want. And for us, it doesn't make sense for us to buy someone else's home when for about the same price, we can build a new house. And granted, there's a process and building a home is a lot. It's been very stressful so far, just navigating financing and figuring out how much do we want to spend in upgrades? What's the max that we can spend? And you know, interest rates are high right now. So to be honest with you, our mortgage that we have on this house is going to double on the new house. Our mortgage is going to double at the interest rates that we're at right now. Now they're hoping that the rates will drop a little bit once or twice before our house is built, but we're having a, it's a big financial investment in this house. Like I said, our mortgage is going to be substantially more, double what our mortgage is right now. Because Troy finally gets his social security. He's finally getting his pension. We finally have our life where we want it to be, this is the time for us to make this move, to move to a community that better serves us, to have a brand new house that's everything that we ever wanted, to spend our retirement years in our dream home, and to really just have what we've worked our entire adult life for. We feel extremely blessed and grateful that we're able to do this. This is 
This is really, really exciting. And like I said, I wanna take you guys with us throughout the entire journey. I plan on having several videos. I'm going to share with you the beginning process of building a new house, the finding the lot, determining your floor plan, picking out your finishes. We're going to take you through design and then I'll have another video as the house is being built from step one all the way to the day that we're able to move in and then we'll have a new home tour. Where I'm gonna take you guys through everything. So if you wanna build a new house in the future or you wonder what the process is like, I'm gonna take you through it every step of the way and I wanna share with you this really exciting life adventure that we're going on. Both Troy and I are so excited. I can't even express how excited we are and really truly how grateful we are thank you for you guys for watching my videos for using my links for using my discount code for having me help you with your weight loss journey through coaching all of the things that you do in supporting my channel really helps us get to the point where we're able to do this so thank you thank you from the bottom of my entire family's heart because this is a dream come true for us it's a dream come true and I can't believe that we actually get to do this that we actually get to build our dream home it's it's something honestly I never thought would ever happen for us and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, so thank you so much. Pull it together, pull it together. This is a happy video, this is an exciting video. So I want, so make sure you're subscribed because again, I'm, we're gonna take you through the entire process from start to finish. So I imagine the next video will be up within the next few weeks once we go through design. That's kind of the final step of the beginning phases. And then the next video will be as the house is being built and will be several months down the road. It's gonna be a long process, but we're, you're gonna come with us and we're so excited. So let me know down below if you're, what your thoughts are, any tips that you have for building a new home. And again, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. It really means the most to us. We're, we're so grateful for each and every one of you. And thank you again for your continued support. It means a lot to us. And I'm really excited. I hope you're excited. Let's do it. Let's build this dream home together. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on so you don't miss all of the future content of this new build. And of course, check out the description box for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. Come join our Facebook group. I'm gonna be sharing things there as well. That's kind of how you can keep up with me more day to day there and over on Instagram. So follow me there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.